it's, it's a very basic idea. You know, we're social animals. Um, our happiness, our joy, our success, everything is dependent on our relationships. Um, and we respond to the environments we're in. You can take a good person and put them in, bad, in a bad environment, and they're capable of doing bad things. Likewise, you can take a person that the group or even society has given up on, and you put them in a good environment, and they're capable of turning their lives around and really making something remarkable out of themselves. Um, we are social animals and we respond to the environments we're in, and leaders are responsible for building that environment. And if you create an environment in which people feel safe amongst their own, we will naturally, the natural human response to those conditions is trust and cooperation. Remember, trust and cooperation are feelings, they're not instructions. There's no PowerPoint or pitch that you can give upon the end that someone will trust you. You can't tell somebody, trust me. It doesn't work that way, right. they're feelings. Um, likewise, if you create an environment where we actually fear each other, fear the people with whom we work, the natural human reaction to that, uh, that environment is paranoia, cynicism, mistrust, and self-interest. That's what happens. There's enough danger outside the organization, there's enough stuff going on outside that we should have to fear the people we work with or fear our own leaders. And most leaders don't get this. Most leaders think leadership is about being in charge. No, it's not. It's about taking care of those in your charge. Most leaders think everybody works for them. No, nope. you work for the people in your organization. It is your responsibility to take care of them, make them feel safe, and they will naturally want to cooperate and work hard and give you their blood and sweat and tears to advance your vision. All they ask is you take care of them, make them feel valued and valuable, and the rest takes care of itself. It's like a parent, it's like a coach. Teach them, train them, give them the opportunity to fall and try again. Um, and, and if they fear the leader, then they're going to take steps to protect themselves from the leader. It's pervasive in our world today. If you work in an organization where, where it's standard practice for employees to feel the need to send a CYA email after every single decision they make, that is a sign that they are taking time and energy out of their day away from doing their job in order to protect themselves from their own leaders. That's what that is. You know, anybody who keeps a file of all the good things they've done in their career just in case they need it? Yeah. That is people taking time and energy away from doing their jobs in order to protect themselves from their own organization. So you can't ask those people to give you the best of their thinking and be more productive if you've created an environment where they're forced to protect themselves from you, you know? And this is what I learned. Well, let's be crystal clear in what I mean by safe. It doesn't mean that you can't get in trouble. It doesn't mean that there isn't discipline. It doesn't mean that it's a charity and everybody just floats along. That's not what we're talking about here. What we mean is that there's enough pressure coming from the outside, the ups and downs of an economy, the uncertainty of the future, um, the, uh, uh, the, the whims of a stock market, your competition that is sometimes trying to put you out of business, sometimes trying to kill you, but at the very minimum, they're frustrating your growth. Like there's enough pressure over which we have no control. These things are a constant. The only variable inside an organization is the environment. That is entirely within our control. And that's the leader's responsibility. And if the leaders make the people feel like they're given uh, an education on how to do their job, the opportunity to try and try again um, and again and again, um, the opportunity to build their confidence and become their best selves, um, the opportunity to interact and build strong relationships, um, this is what I mean by feeling safe, that I love the people I work with, I love where I work, I enjoy going there. So if a leader doesn't feel safe from their own people, it's because the leader isn't taking care of their people. Remember, we call someone leader not because they're in charge, but because they went first, first into the unknown, first towards the danger, first to protect the people, because everybody just stands there and says, what are we gonna do? It's the leader says, I got it. I got your backs. That's why we call you leader. I know many people who sit at the highest levels of organizations who aren't leaders. They have authority. We do as they tell us because they have authority over us, but we wouldn't follow them. We wouldn't work to keep them safe and advance their vision. And I know many people who sit at the lowest levels of organizations that have no authority, but absolutely are leaders because they've made the choice to look after the person to the left, the left of them and to take care of the person to the right of them. That is what it means to be a leader. Having a position of authority simply means that you get to operate at greater scale and influence more people. But a leader can never feel safe until the people feel safe first. That's the responsibility of the leader, to start to go first.